and it's action, is it? We're already rolling. I need something for the bloopers, you know. Of course you do. Hello and welcome and thank you for joining us at our training session this afternoon. Today we'll be focusing on how to put centre, front and back creases into your chinos. Okay, so chinos. Same pair of pants that we did in the previous video. Um, black pockets specifically so that you could see where the pockets were placed and how to pull them out as you're going. So if you follow the same system coming around, 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 when you take them off, same thing. Put your loops together at the front. They are usually in the right place. Open it out and give them a shake. That will usually line it up quite nicely. These ones don't look too bad. So again, when I'm pulling this up, I'm not pulling too far because I'm going to lose what I've just put down. So just leave an inch or so at the crutch. Work out your seams and your intersection. So right here in the crutch, that's where we want to be making sure that all of these the two seams are right on top of each other. And if you're just going like this with your fingers or pushing it in with your nails is usually the best way. And as you do that and you lift and wave, that's all going to fall in for you nicely. This looks quite nice. I'm, I'm tempted to go directly onto the whole front part. So I know my stitches are right there. I'm ironing away. Careful where that falls and I know my pockets there so I'm going to be careful there. If I want to go all the way up here, I need to make sure that my pockets are out of the way. Now careful I don't pull everything else off so hang on to things. The idea with a pair of pants and where to line them up, you're looking at the intersection at the crutch but you're also looking at what's going on at the waistband. And at the waistband what you're looking to do is aim for this to be parallel to itself so that you're not out here or you're not over there the pockets out of the way, I can go all the way up, take them back, zigzag along with a bit of a drag, take myself down to the next part and again I'm ironing away from the uh, centre uh, seam and I'm sitting down and waiting for the heat and the steam to penetrate so that I have a nice sharp finish. Again, the same thing here. I can feel with my fingers that this isn't quite straight. Thank you, Sandy. But if I move them this way, I will be able to take it all the way up if I want. Now again, I've got my black pocket here. If I don't want to go all the way up, I can stop right there. If I do, again, get that pocket out of the way. Everything away and work it so that you can actually get that parallel finish at your waistband. Once you've done the one leg, we want to turn it around onto the front. Again, coming back from the crease into the center, from the crease into the center, and careful what you've got here. If we have ironed, which we didn't these ones, but if we have gone all the way around, all of this would have already been ironed, so we don't need to come all the way up. All we're doing is focusing our, our creases in those specific areas. Once we've got one side, then we do the other side. And again, now it's time to get to the other leg. So one way, as I did with the jeans, is to come through here and pull them up. And here's your other leg. Another way of moving them around. Sorry, let me just get back to where I was. This is where you finished. Another way of moving them around. So instead of coming back through, take your hand and let it come through this way. Whichever is easier for you. Again, leave yourself a little bit of a flap there so that you don't have that gravity pulling the leg out of shape for you. And again, this is what I mean. 
all over here is nice and flat at the moment. The minute that it comes off the board ah. or off the table, it's going to be starting to pull and I can't get a straight finish. Same thing here, I still can't get a straight finish. But once I have them nicely with a little bit of an ease in, then I have a nice flat leg. So again, from the intersection, aligning the seam, working it out from the center, working your shins first, depending on the size of the pads, move them around as you need to if they fit and you can do the whole front section you can. You may go over the pockets in mid-air so that you don't put in any imprints or any shine depending on the type of material that you have. And as you would have noticed I just twisted that around because I can feel within my hands exactly whether or not the waistband is aligned so I can feel and pull it accordingly. That way my, my crease, especially the ones in the front, will go all the way up nice and straight rather than going around the corner somewhere. Even with the pale coloured chinos, Eve, if you go over the pocket, you'll still get a mark. You, you might get an imprint, depending yes. on how hard you're pressing, depending on the type of material that it is. So, you know, always still do your, uh, your first check on the inside of your fly is, the, is my best advice when you first get to start going around the pads, have a, have a feel, have a check, see what the temperature is that you need, whether or not, what you'll have to do. Around on the other side, same thing, again, this time I'm coming in rather than out so that I'm not putting in a double crease. Pressing rather than stretching, or sorry, pressing rather than gliding or ironing, steaming over where I need to. Um, we're done, aren't we? <laughs> and again, line them up for yourself, decide whether you're going to present them on a hanger, um, slide the hanger in underneath as you like, or working them in thirds, again at the shins or at the knees and at the um, hips. So that's that one. So one more thing, of course, there's more than one way of doing everything. So an alternative for you, you may at one point or another want to just turn your world upside down and instead of starting at the top where what you may have seen, the top was getting quite recreased as we were moving along with the rest of the legs. If you have something that might be like a linen fabric that will definitely recrease very, very quickly. So instead of starting at the top, start at the bottom and work your way up. And instead of lining your pants up here at the waist, line them up at the ankles. So what you'd be doing is putting your center stitches, your outside and your inseams together. You would be putting your fingers in between them. Let me just get my fingers working, there we go. So that my stitches are in the center and drop the pads. Now there's one little extra benefit to that. As you drop the pads, gravity here, if I dare say, can be our friend rather than our enemy, because now what's going to happen is that all of those pockets are already outside um, of my reach. Instead of being here and me having to fiddle with them, they're already out of my way. And to center those seams on top of one another. And then go ahead with your usual process, but this time we're just doing the legs first and then we're going to come around and do the rest of the top, which now gives us an opportunity to touch every, anything up, especially if it's been um, uh, recreasing or possibly recreasing on a particular type of uh, fabric such as linen. So when you're doing the legs, the first bit, mm -hmm. you're putting the creases in at the same time. I, am. I will be doing everything that I that you've just, just seen me do a few moments ago. Putting except, the and what you did see is that the top wasn't ironed. I've since gone and ironed that. But what you would be doing is do your legs first with the creases with the both creases sides. all the way like you did a few moments ago, and do section, right? So you can think of your pants as either a section here of the shins. Sometimes they're cut 
in a generous way where you can have a whole half section of one leg and another one all the other way but sometimes you may need to section even into four pieces and work on those sections separately and how far up are you ironing in the crease in this first step I wouldn't be bothering going all the way up at this particular point even though my pockets are out of the way but you can if you want to they are out of the way you can keep going all the way and do the same as we had just done but if you're a little bit particular about that recreasing on the top or you have a, a lovely linen material which will crease the minute that you look at it then you can do your legs first then run around your edges yeah. and remember to go from the thigh to the hip to the waist so that you have your 90 degree angles and you've got all the control and then you can do one other thing which is so we've turned the process upside down we can turn placement upside down too so instead of putting your pants on on a horizontal across along the board put them across the board we've ironed everything and again we're straightening things up here and if you really want to make sure that you've got your creases all the way up this is another alternative that you can use my pockets are still out of the way enough to be able to just come along the very edge here it's a lot easier to get to for example if I use just my little training iron the unattached one you can easily get into that area there line it up for yourself you might even be able to touch up the two at the same time and over here on the other side you've got much more uh, an easier approach and you can see much better as to how to get into this area and have the even finish that you're looking for. Why do you have to get the pocket out of the way on that front section? What happens if the pocket's sitting there and you iron on it? Over that, here, yes. especially if I'm doing the, the creases specifically. Well, I will get an imprint. I might get an imprint. And if it's a dark pair of pants, I will definitely get an imprint. Okay. And I might get a shine, which I don't necessarily want, according to the pair of pants or the cut that you have. Would silk pants also crease like the linen, you know, if you're folding them one, two, three? like the pants over more more often than not anything that you're folding will have well they won't crease they'll but have fold marks, fold marks. Mm -hmm. um, and for that reason specifically we prefer to hang things up and again when we're hanging things up we'll be hanging at an area where we all bend which would be at the at the hip area rather than in the middle right across here oops except I don't have anywhere to hang it up on <laughs> I'll just pass it over. Thank you very much. I think that about covers it. I just wanted to make sure that there is an alternate method and that you can change your process and change your placement according to your needs and according to your mood. After all, it's the honest prerogative. May the steam be with you. Okay.